Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. Bienvenidos al podcast del nuevo químico. Carlos Irza, testo podcast to New Chemist. Welkom bij de podcast van The New Chemist. Bienvenue sur le podcast du Nouveau Chimiste. Bem-vindo ao podcast do Novo Químico. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. Work hard. Be value driven. You can do it. You can grow and learn it. You can be the difference you and your community needs. Don't give up. We are here rooting and cheering for you. Don't give up. Travaillez dur. Soyez axé sur la valeur. Tu peux le faire. Vous pouvez grandir et l'apprendre. Vous pouvez être la différence dont vous et votre communauté avez besoin. N'abandonnez pas. Nous sommes ici pour vous encourager et vous encourager. N'abandonnez pas. Trabalhar duro. Seja orientado por valores. Você consegue. Você pode crescer e aprender. Você pode ser a diferença que você e sua comunidade precisam. Não desista. Estamos aqui torcendo e torcendo por você. Não desista. Δούλεψε σκληρά. Να οδηγείτε στην αξία. Μπορεί να το κάνει. Μπορείτε να μεγαλώσετε και να το μάθετε. Μπορείτε να είστε η διαφορά που χρειάζεστε εσεί και η κοινότητά σα. Μην τα παρατά. Είμαστε εδώ για να σα ζητοκραυγάσουμε. Μην τα παρατά. Trabaja duro. Sea impulsado por el valor. Puedes hacerlo. Puedes crecer y aprenderlo. Usted puede ser la diferencia que usted y su comunidad necesitan. No te rindas, estamos aquí animándote y animándote. No te rindas. Werk hard. Wees waarde gedreven. Je kunt het. Je kunt groeien en leren. U kunt het verschil zijn dat u en uw gemeenschap nodig hebben. Geef niet op. We zijn hier om voor je te roten en te juichen. Geef niet op. Work hard. Be value driven. You can do it. You can grow and learn it. You can be the difference you and your community needs. Don't give up. We are here rooting and cheering for you. Don't give up. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is the new chemist where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I.
Okay, this is another addendum to the episodes entitled The Journey to Not Flex Success. This is another addendum. We're going to be talking about agonists and antagonists and all the different flavors. So agonists are drugs that bind to a cell's receptor in order to mimic the effect of a substance the body naturally produces that binds to the same receptor. Two main classes of receptor ligands in pharmacology we have agonists and antagonists, and the references for this episode will be listed in the episode description. So agonists tend to be smaller molecules that affect the activation of receptors. Note, this may result in stimulation or inhibition of the cell and organ function. Full agonists produce maximum maximal biological response. Full agonists produce maximal biological response. It has maximal positive intrinsic activity, aka efficacy. Partial agonists, whereas partial agonists produce partial maximal biological response as compared to full agonists. So partial agonists produce partial maximal biological response. Partial agonists have lower positive intrinsic activity and they may competitively inhibit full agonists preventing maximal biological response. So let's run through that again. Full agonists produce maximal biological response. It has maximal positive intrinsic activity, so efficacy. Um, and partial agonists produce partial maximal biological response as compared to full agonists. They have lower positive intrinsic activity. And they may competitively inhibit full agonists preventing maximal biological response. If the partial agonist is bound to a receptor, the full agonist uh, typically cannot bind. Um, why use a partial agonist? Full agonists may cause too much activation, resulting in toxicity or receptor adaptation or prolonged use and desensitization and down regulation. The lower efficacy of partial agonists minimizes the co- these complications. Now you also have inverse agonists. These produce opposite biological response to that of the endogenous agonists. Um, it has negative intrinsic activity. So let's talk about antagonists. Antagonists tend to be larger molecules producing inhibitory effects. Or effect, an inhibitory effect. There are antagonists that act as a receptor, also known as receptor antagonists. So let's let's make sure we keep this thing in focus. So antagonists, by definition, have zero intrinsic activity. Antagonists, by definition, have zero intrinsic activity. Full agonists have intrinsic activity of 100%. Maximum biological response. Partial agonists have intrinsic activity greater than zero, but less than 100. And they can, uh, partial agonists can competitively inhibit a full agonist. Um, you also have inverse agonists, so you have intrinsic activity less than zero. And then you also have Then you also have non-competitive antagonists, and those can be unsurmountable, um, depending on uh, them being irreversible or steric. You will get to that. So let's keep going. Just a quick note. Efficacy is referring to different levels of biological response or intracellular signaling when they occupy the same receptor. Intrinsic activity refers to the maximum positive, maximal positive possible effect that can be produced by a drug. Intrinsic activity is determined by the drug receptor relationship for a drug that acts on the receptor. Okay, you also have efficacy. You have efficacy, you also have affinity, which is the measure of the ability of the drug to bind to its molecular target. So the affinity is the measure of the ability of the drug to bind to its molecular target. The VC50, which is the measure of the potency of the Drug. So let's keep going. Antagonists. They tend to be larger molecules exhibiting inhibitory effects. There are antagonists that act the receptor. These are known as receptor antagonists. Antagonists do not have intrinsic activity. They simply block the agonists from binding. 
So if we think about these things on a spectrum, when we look at we think about efficacy related to the endogenous ligand, you have your full inverse agonist at, at uh, less than zero, your partial inverse agonist still less than zero, you have your antagonist at zero, and you have your partial agonist, which is greater than zero and less than 100. We're talking about F intrinsic activity, and then you have your full agonist at 100%. Okay, intrinsic activity, positive intrinsic activity. So competitive antagonists, reversible or surmountable, binds to receptor at the same site as the endogenous or pharmacological agonist, blocking agon blocking agonist binding and therefore receptor activation. So it binds to receptor at the same site as an endogenous or pharmacological agonist, blocking agonist binding and therefore receptor activation. Okay. So if you were to look at um, the plot of an agonist versus agonist effect, when you include the competitive antagonist, it shifts to the right. These are ideal scenarios, of course. Okay, antagonism can be reversed by increasing the amount or dose of agonists. Thus, we have the surmountability. This is talking about competitive antagonists. So competitive antagonists do not affect agonist efficacy. They do decrease affinity and potency. So competitive antagonists do not affect agonist efficacy. They do decrease affinity and potency. Competitive antagonists have infinity or potency for the receptor, but not intrinsic activity. By definition, an antagonist does not have intrinsic activity. Receptors can interact with agonists or the competitive antagonists. Okay. And that is exclusive. Okay. Non-competitive receptor antagonists. Non-competitive receptor antagonists. Non-competitive receptor antagonists, unsurmountable. So irreversible binds to the same site as the agonist, not easily displaced, generally irreversible due to the covalent bonds between the antagonist and the receptor, reducing the number of receptors available to the agonist. So just a quick aside, picture a graph of an agonist versus a biological response with your minimum toxic concentration reference and noted and your minimum effective concentration reference and noted. So let's just think about that. Think about that. And you have your MEC um, below and your MTC above. So MTC, minimum toxic concentration, minimum effective concentration. This is just picture this graph with these points noted on it. Okay. So with the full agonist and partial agonist starting at the same XY point, ideally, the partial agonist will plateau between the MTC and MEC. The minimum toxic concentration and minimum effective concentration whereas the full agonist will have a higher biological response and plateau higher okay let's keep going in the absence of spare receptors the dose response curve will show lower maximum when the agonist is combined with non-competitive antagonists however in the presence of spare receptors there is a grad there's gradually upgraded upon increasing non-competitive antagonists a decrease in agonist effect. So, however, in the presence of spare receptors, that is gradually upgraded upon increasing non competitive antagonists, a decrease in agonist effect. So, allosteric non competitive antagonists. So, allosteric is referring to the other side, um, and you know, orthosterics is referring to the right binding site. So, binding to the allosteric site modifies the conformation of the primary site. With negative allosteric antagonists resulting in an altered conformation as less responsive to the agonists. So let's wrap this up. Physiological antagonists, molecules that do not bind the same receptor and as the endogenous ligand, but produce an effect opposite to the agonist effect. Molecules that do not bind the same receptor of the endogenous ligand, but produce an effect opposite to the agonist effect so this is the physiological antagonist now a chemical antagonist as we conclude drugs do not interact with agonist receptor but rather reduce the concentration of the agonist by forming a chemical complex um, let's go through that again physiological antagonist molecules that do not bind the same receptor 
of the endogenous ligand, but produce an effect. Opposite to the agonist effect, chemical antagonist drugs do not interact with agonist receptor, but rather reduce the concentration of an agonist by forming a chemical complex. So hopefully this helped. These are important terms. It's important to know these things. These are like, yeah, um, yeah. No way. These are very important. Very, very important. So all the best. Take care. This is the conclusion of this addendum. Okay, welcome to the New Chemist Podcast, episode 3C. We go back to the basics and discuss fundamental ideas that support the understanding of pharmacy ideas. And we're using the format of a telephone conversation. This is definitely an episode worth listening to. So it's important to note that the purpose of these episodes are not at all medical advice, medical suggestions, or medical counsel. These are aimed to provide support for pharmacists and training in educational and intellectually stimulating ways. Again, please note that these are not at all medical advice, medical suggestions, or medical counsel. Please see your local state and board certified physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner, and pharmacist for medical advice and suggestions. Once again, these are not at all for medical advice, suggestions, or counsel. Please see your local state and board certified physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner, and pharmacist for medical advice, suggestions, and counsel. The views also, the views in this podcast represent those of my guests and I. So, pharmacy school is a blast. However, you must be very dedicated and maintain a good integration of your self-care regimen as well as your personal affairs as well as your academic responsibilities so let's run through a few quick facts and then we will conclude this episode for today so pharmacokinetics it's what the body does to the drug we're talking about absorption distribution metabolism and excretion over time was the goal of pharmacokinetics we want to control the amount of drug exposure so let's talk about respiratory alkalosis. It involves a rise in blood pH due to hyperventilation, so that's excessive breathing, and a resulting decrease in carbon dioxide. Let's talk about acidosis. What is it? Blood pH lower than 7.35. So let's also talk about extravascular drug absorption. Um, that involves uh, oral, the stomach, absorbing the intestine, metabolizing the liver, some amount of drug reaches the systemic circulation, and the rest of the drug is excreted. Let's talk about intravascular drug absorption. Um, actually, we'll come back to that. Let's talk about the first pass effect. The initial metabolism in the liver of a drug absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract before the drug reaches systemic circulation through the bloodstream. Let's say that again. First pass effect. The initial metabolism in the liver of a drug absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract before the drug reaches systemic circulation through the bloodstream. Let's also talk about enterohepatic cycling. Drugs are transported through the bile back to the intestine where they can be reabsorbed in the intestines, increasing the duration of action. One more time, enterohepatic recycling. Drugs are transported through the bile back to the intestine where they can be reabsorbed in the intestines, increasing the duration of action. So immediately when we administer uh, intravenously, you have 100% bioavailability, uh, intravascular administration, involves IV, as well as intraarterial, um, local activity, it will involve things like dermal pulmonary, topical ocular, intraocular, stomach activity will involve things like oral sublingual, buccal, intramuscular, subcutaneous, Selective beta blockers. That's, so we're just running through a litany of facts that are useful. So it's primarily under the umbrella of pharmacy basics. So just running through some ideas quickly. Um, just to give people a quick refresher for those who are in training at this time. 
selected beta blockers, methoprolol, atenol, all, lisoprolol, nibivolol, acetabutol, all, betoxolol, esmolol. How is the drug absorbed? Active transport with transport proteins or passive diffusion. So we already mentioned how intravascular administration involves intravenous or intraarterial. Let's see what else can we talk about. Um, so let's talk about the solution. It's a process of drugs dissolving in the GI tract. The solution rate, we look at the noise written equation. The smaller the particle size, the greater the absorption. Increasing the surface area increases the drug absorption. Let's make a quick note of that. The solution rate, we look at the noise with any equation. Smaller the particle size, the greater the absorption. Increasing the surface area increases the drug absorption. Almost rhymes. Now how to limit drug degradation? You have your enteric coating, biodegradable polymers, so acidic environment in the stomach won't destroy the drug, increasing the amount of drug absorption. Bioavailability. Bioavailability. Amount of drug available systemically to produce an effect. So how much of the drug is available in the drug in the drug to produce a therapeutic effect? So how much is available to produce a therapeutic effect? So formula percent of drug absorbed. The amount appears in systemic circulation or the amount administered. High bioavailability is above 70%. Low bioavailability is below 10%. Let's go back to that again. Formula percent of drug absorbed. Amount appears in systemic circulation over the amount administered. So amount appears in systemic circulation over the amount administered. High bioavailability is above 70%, whereas low bioavailability is below 10%. So let's see, let's give an example. So if we have 20 so we if we administered 100 milligrams of a drug orally and 20 milligrams appears in systemic circulation, 20 over 100 is the same thing as 0.2. Multiply by 100 when we're talking about percent, it gives us 20 percent. Okay, and from the framework that we just discussed, that will give you an idea as to what type of what extent or what uh, amount of bioavailability is occurring with that problem. So, drugs with 100 percent oral bioavailability levofloxacin, linezolid. So, those two, those are examples of two. So, formula for bioavailability. Area under the plasma, concentration time curve representing total drug exposure. That's a mouthful. Let's go over that again. Formula for bioavailability. Area under the plasma concentration time curve representing total drug exposure. Okay, there are formulas for that. We can discuss that later. So what are the physical chemical properties that affect drug distribution? Lipophilicity. Lipids can easily lipids can easily lipids can easily cross the membrane all the things that affect this drug distribution molecular weight ionization status the charged particles can pass not non-charged particles can pass and protein binding so lipophilicity molecular weight ionization status and protein binding so LIMP, L-I-M-P, lipophilicity, ionization status, molecular weight, protein binding, those are the lens which you look at, or basically the parameters that you kind of look at when you're trying to determine uh, or understand what's affected drug distribution. Um, also, let's go back to the formula for bioavailability. Um, 100%, 100 times AUC subscript EX over AUC subscript IV times dose subscript IV over dose EX. So it's important to note that EX is referring to extravascular, IV is referring to intravenous, AUC is referring to area on the curve. Um, 100 is being used because we're talking about percent and F is absolute bioavailability. Let's run that back one more time. F is absolute bioavailability. We multiply by 100 because we're talking about percent. AUC is area under the curve. IV is referring to intravenous. Intravenous. EX is referring to extravascular. So F is 
a hundred times AUC EX over AUC IV, and that whole thing is multiplied by dose IV over dose EX. So high protein binding drug has high affinity for albumin, so the amount of free drug will be low. The albumin acts as a reservoir for the drug and it releases the free drug in small amounts of the tissue to exert its effect. This increases the duration of action. High protein binding drug has a high affinity for albumin, so the amount of free drug will be low. The albumin acts as a reservoir for the drug and it releases the free drug in small amounts to the tissue to exert its effect. This increases the duration of action. 28. Albumin. So, protein in the blood that's made in the liver. So, let's see. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. When a correction form, oh, site specific drug delivery. Antibodies bind to particular receptors of specific tissues or organs. Site specific drug delivery involves antibodies binding to particular receptors of specific tissues or organs. So, when are correction formulas needed? Highly bound protein drugs with patients whose serum albumin is low. Examples of highly protein bound drugs phenytoin, warfarin. Um, examples of those. Um, Let's look and see what else can we talk about. Calcium corrected formula. So calcium in brackets reported serum plus in brackets 4.0 subtracting the almond amount and that difference is multiplied by 0 0.8. Phenytoin corrected formula. Total phenytoin measured over in brackets 0 0.2 times the almond amount plus 0 0.1. So the product of 0 0.2 times the album amount in the bracket added to 0 0.1 the whole thing is the denominator all under the numerator which is total phenytoin measured. So the volume of distribution, this is the amount of drug in body over plasma drug concentration. Okay, so small volume of distribution uh, involves it being confined to plasma extracellular space. Um, example of tobromycin 0.2 liters per kilogram, large volume distribution, wide distribution to all body tissues, so the plasma drug concentration is low. Pitocycline is an example of that, 79 liters per kilogram. So guys, what kind of volume distribution would you want to, a drug to have if you were treating a systemic infection? You can think about that, you process that in your healthcare profession class or science class. Okay. Um, let's see what else we talk about. So metabolism it involves the process by which a drug is converted from its original chemical structure to other chemical forms. The original chemical form is the current drug. Other chemical forms, metabolites, occurs primarily in gut and liver. You want the drug to be lipophilic so it can cross the phospholipid bilayer and exert its effects on the tissues. The body undergoes multiple biological reactions to make these intermediates hydrophilic so that they can be excreted by the body. Okay, so lidocaine undergoes extensive first pass metabolism in the liver, so it's only administered, or typically administered in the intravenous form. Okay. Excretion, irreversible removal of the drug from the body, organs for excretion, you have the kidneys, which, and that results kidneys function to produce urine. The gut, GI tract basically functions to produce feces, lungs function to produce exhaled air, the skin function to produce sweat, the liver function to produce bile. So clearance is defined as the volume of plasma cleared of, of a drug over a period of time. Clearance is defined as the volume of drug of plasma cleared of a drug over a period of time. Okay, two formulas for clearance involve the rate of elimination over concentration. Also, F times dose over area under the curve. 
Okay, so half life, the time in which 50% of the drug is eliminated. T1 half. So, first law of elimination, the constant percentage of drug, constant percentage of drug is removed per unit time. The drug concentration is eliminated, and that's directly proportional to the concentration of the drug. Okay. Let's see what else we can talk about. Let's see. So, zero on elimination, the constant amount of drug is eliminated per unit time. So, mechanics mental kinetics, this is like, if you've done biochemistry and you're now in a pharmacy program, this is an idea that you see over and over and over again. So, let's think. Mechanics mental kinetics, you have your mixed or is it saturable or non linear kinetics. Um, increasing the dose leads to a disproportionate, disproportionate increase in concentration. Um, first section of the curve of the curve, lots of available enzymes. Second section, composition of enzymes, more drugs and binding sites available on enzyme. Third section, all the astrocytes on the enzymes are occupied, so the drug is not being metabolized leading to toxicity. So let's keep going. KM concentration at half max of um, Vmax. Um, Michaela spent some drugs, phenytoin, theophylline, voriconazole. Okay, let's keep going. It's important to note that let's just talk about a quick case, quick case scenario. Patient has been using phenytoin 100 milligrams three times daily. So TID, the, fin the phenytoin level was drawn and found to be 8.8 micrograms per milliliter, reference range 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliter. The prescriber doubled the dose to 20 milligrams three times daily, so TID. The patient started to slur words, felt fatigued, and returned to the clinic. The level was repeated and found to be 23.7 micrograms per milliliter. The two following is accurate regarding the most likely reason for the change in the twin level. So, um, what we understand is that metabolism can become saturated at higher doses. Phenytoin metabolism can become saturated at higher doses. Saturation point. Let's keep going now. Saturation point. Adding more substrate will make no difference in the reaction rate. Good rule of thumb for the toin, if there's seven micrograms per milliliter in the serum, adjust doses in small increments, no more than 30 to 50 milligrams at a time. So KE okay, is the elimination rate constant. Um, let's see. The loading dose, use of a higher dose than what is usually used for treatment. To allow the drug to reach the concentration that exerts the therapeutic effect. As we progress, one of these episodes, we'll spend some time talking about therapeutic effects and therapeutic indices, therapeutic windows. Okay, so let's keep going. We're going to talk about some pharmacology basics now. Pharmacology is a body of knowledge concerned with the actions of chemicals on biological systems. What is medical pharmacology? It involves the use of chemicals in prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of disease. What is toxicology? It is concerned with the undesirable effects of chemicals on biological systems. What is pharmacokinetics? It involves what the body does to the drug. You have your ADME, your absorption, your distribution, your metabolism, your excretion. What is pharmacodynamics? How I think about this is when I look at the word, D comes with four of the letters. M, A, and N. So it's what the drug does to the body or drug does to the mind. That's how I see it. That's how I process this. So in pharmacodynamics, what the drug does to the body. What is onset of action? Is how much of drug of the drug comes into circulation to produce the effect determined by the rule of administration and drug dosage. When you increase the drug dosage, the concentration of drug in the body will also increase. So what is onset of action? is how much of the drug comes into circulation to produce effect. The effect, determined by the rule of administration and drug dosage. 
When you increase drug dosage, the concentration of drug in the body will also increase. So what is duration of oxygen affected by, or what can be affected by the drug dosage, or higher the dosage? Um, it also can be affected by the rate of distribution, the rate of metabolism, and the rate of excretion. So let me see, minimum effective concentration, it's the amount of drug required to produce a therapeutic effect. So what is the duration of action? It's a time between the rise to the decline at minimum effective concentration for therapeutic effect. What is the MOA, the mechanism of drug action? Drugs cannot produce amino oxygen in the body, can act on enzymes, ion channels upregulate or downregulate the system within the body. So there is some more things. There are some more things we want to talk about. Ligands. So they're signaling molecules. RA except existing in the active state. RI except existing in the inactive state. Depending on where you read, some people refer to like in biochemistry is referred to. Um, they use different methods to describe those things in undergrad biochemistry. But for now, in this phase, we'll talk about RA being a receptor existing in an active state, RI receptor existing in an inactive state. So the external receptor site, ligands bind outside plasma membrane and produces changes or change inside the cell. These are elegantly displayed with receptor proteins on the phospholipid bind layer. So the internal receptor site. Drugs go inside the cell, bind the receptor inside the cell, moves the nucleus to produce desired effect. So mechanisms of agonist mediated activation. You have your ion channels, the GPCRs, wonderful class of wonderful group class of receptors, just excellent. Wonderful family, if you will. Um Receptor tyrosine kinases, intracellular hormone receptors. So those are the things you want you want to like focus in on. Ion channel ligand, gated voltage, gated second messenger regulated. Um, ligand gated ion channel, drug binds the ion channel, activating it to open, so it enters triggering triggering an action potential. Voltage gated ion channel change in charge or potential between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell causing the channels to open to maintain internal homeostasis inside the cell the charge is between negative 70 millivolts and negative 90 millivolts to open the gate to maintain internal homeostasis Okay, let's go. Second messenger regulated. Various second messengers are regulated certain channels by opening and closing them. Some include calcium and cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP can cause the activation of enzymes which trigger signaling transmission pathways. So your GPCRs, your guanine protein coupled receptors, a signal receptor protein in the part of the membrane that responds to the binding of a signal molecule by activating a G protein, also called a G protein linked receptor. Your RTK is receptor tyrosine kinases. Instant binds to tyrosine kinase receptor. Tyrosine, tyrosine kinase receptor undergoes autophosphorylation. Insulin receptor is activated. Downstream cascade of signals. Final signal is to recruit glucose transporters, GLUT. Well, move from cytosol to plasma membrane that takes these into tissues 
for utilization or storage. So let's talk about some amino acids for a bit. Just for a quick bit, we know um, some amino acids with hydroxyl groups are your serine, tyrosine, and threonine. So serine, if you go from the peptide backbone and walk down the R group, you have so serine has the methylene spacer and the hydroxyl tyrosine as your methylene spacer, your benzyl ring, and then your hydroxyl and threonine as a methyne spacer then a methyl group that comes off from that, and then a hydroxyl group. Okay, so kinase. Kinase is anything that causes phosphorylation. If you want to look up the spacers, in terms of methylene, TH2, methane, CH is what you're referring to, we say those spacers. That's kind of organic chemistry talk, or speak, if you will, for those who are organic chemistry majors or who study some organic chemistry. So let's talk about kinases, enzymes that cause phosphorylation, so intracellular hormone receptor, most of steroids enter the cell easily because they are lipids, bind to receptors inside the cell in the cell plasm, get activated, move to the nucleus, cause DNA transcription, which leads to the formation of particular proteins. So affinity, the measure of tightness in which a drug binds to a receptor. What is intrinsic activity? So the ability of a drug to activate a receptor upon binding an agonist. There's a drug that limits the action of the endogenous ligand. Primary agonist drug binds the same recognition site as the endogenous agonist. So I've heard of allosteric, but this was, this was a new one for me, orthosteric. Orthosteric site, the primary or the right binding site. Um, allosteric agonist binds to a different region of the receptor. So allosteric is referring to another, that's what that word means, literally. Antagonist, drugs that block or reduce the activity of an agonist. So antagonist blocks the agonist. Antagonist. And these have affinity but no intrinsic activity. And remember, intrinsic activity is the ability of a drug to activate a receptor upon binding. This entopic interaction, competition with agonists for the same overlapping, same or overlapping sites, entopic interaction, competition with agonists for the same or overlapping site. You got your physical antagonist. Physically interacts and nullifies the action of the drug. Example, charcoal, which is a good absorber. It binds alkaloid to form a complex and will be excreted. The chemical antagonist the drug co forms compounds relative to like calcium and magnesium. Example, tetracycline binds with calcium in milk and then will be eliminated. You have your physiological antagonist. The drug that counters the effects of another by binding to a different receptor and causing opposing effects. Drugs that produce an opposite action by binding to a different receptor. Example, adrenaline is a physiological antagonist to histamine because adrenaline causes bronchodilation and histamine causes bronchoconstriction. Pharmacological antagonist. The drug that binds to the receptor and produces no effect and shows no intrinsic activity. And remember, intrinsic activity is basically the ability of a drug to activate a receptor upon binding. Partial agonists. A drug that binds to a receptor and causes a response as less than that caused by a full agonist. You have your inverse agonists. In the stomach, histamine receptors are constitutively activated. They're activated without stimulus. So under normal conditions, they're operating at 20%. Inverse agonists inhibits these receptors, bringing them down to 0%. Competitive agonists, same binding site alertness, resembles chemically with agonists. You have a right shift on the dose response curve. Response depends on concentration. So your dose and response, your dose can be considered like your X value. Your response can be considered like your Y value, if you will. So you plot. So non-competitive agonists, different binding set of agonists, not resemble chemically, a downward chip shift of dose response curve, increasing agonist concentration won't make a difference. So one more time, non-competitive agonists, you have a different binding site of agonists, not resembled chemically, you have a downward shift of the dose response curve, increasing agonist concentration won't make a difference in this case, or in that case. 
So how do we activate receptor sites? You open the closed eye channel, speed up or slow down transporters, increase or decrease enzyme activity. So efficacy. What is efficacy? Is the maximum effect a drug can produce that can be measured with a graded dose response curve? Potency. Is the amount of drug needed to produce a given effect determined by affinity of the receptor for the drug? So EC50, the dose that's required for an individual to experience 50% of the maximum effect. ED50, the dose required to produce a therapeutic effect in 50% of the population, median effective dose. So your therapeutic index, it's a ratio. It compares the blood concentration at which a drug becomes toxic and the concentration at which the drug is effective. The LD50 over ED50, 10 to 1, say if a drug because it has a wider therapeutic index, Three to one, more dangerous drugs needs more attention because the therapeutic index is narrow. LD50, median lethal dose. So tolerance. Um, what is tolerance? Reduced response to drug after prolonged use, develops gradually over a long period of time. For example, alcoholics need more alcohol on the second day to feel the same effect from the first. If it's a custom to alcohol, so the enzymes are ready. So let's talk about pharmacokinetic tolerance. It involves the enhanced enzymatic breakdown. It reduces the amount of drug reaching at the site of action. Example barbiturates, carbamazepine, reduce their own metabolism, so our metabolism or our destruction on frequent repeated use. So pharmacodynamic tolerance. So you had your pharmacokinetic tolerance. Now let's talk about pharmacodynamic tolerance. It is the tolerance caused by altered nervous system sensitivity. Change in receptors. It involves the action of drug as being reduced because of downregulation of receptors, meaning that receptor expression or the amount of receptor present will be less. So receptors not active as before. Or it involves the sensitization of receptors, meaning the receptors will not function as well. So proteins could go through. PTMs or post transitional modifications mean that they lose, for example, a sulfide due to the drug use, due to drug use, losing their function. Some changes are reversible, others are not. And the uh, internalization, and that internalization of receptors or receptors will not be available, and exhaustion of mediators, depletion of catecholamine, or epinephrine as well. So natural inherent tolerance involves the genetic makeup, makes an individual resistant or will have more response to a drug. Acquired tolerance occurs in repeat use of drug. Tolerance develops to sedative, sedative action of chlorpromazine, but not its antipsychotic action. Tolerance occurs to sedative action of phenobarbital, but not to its antiepileptic action. So cross tolerance. Development of tolerance of pharmacologically related drugs. For example, partial tolerance, tolerance between morphine and barbiturates. And then you also have complete cross tolerance between morphine and pethidine, same drug class. So what is tachyphylaxis? What is tachyphylaxis? The type of tolerance that occurs rapidly within minutes or seconds when it takes a small concentration of drugs to cause this. So what are some drugs that have a low or narrow therapeutic index? The obvious phenomenon of the theophylline, carbamazepine, digoxin, warfarin, lithium, phenytoin, gentamicin, ancomycin, antidepressants, bicyclic, insulin. Let's talk some more. And what are your drugs with the narrow therapeutic index? Acetaminophen, theophylline. Carbamazepine, digoxin, warfarin, lithium, phenytoin, gentamicin, vancomycin, antidepressants, bicyclic, and insulin. So, drugs with a higher wide therapeutic index are your NSAIDs, your non steroid anti inflammatory drugs, your benzodiazepines, most antibiotics, furosemide, and your SSRIs. 
nitroglycerin can cause tolerance. As a pharmacist, you must tell the patient you need to have a 10 to 12 nitrate-free period to prevent tolerance. Nitroglycerin causes vasodilation. Let's keep going. Synergism. One drug is going to have an additive effect with another drug increasing efficacy. Action of one drug is facilitated or increased by another drug, or when the one drug is not active alone but active when combined with another. Additive, the effect of two drugs in the same direction. Example, amylodipine. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. So we also have, um, so example, do you have the additive the effect of two drugs in the same direction? Example, amlodipine, so amlodipine and atenol, all antihypertensive. Amlodipine is a calcium channel blocker, and atenol is a beta blocker. Both work to reduce hypertension and act in different places in the heart. You have clibenclamide, libenclamide, and metformin, hypoglycemic, hypoglycemic clibenclamide is a sulfonylureal that increases insulin sensitivity and causes secretion of insulin ox on pancreas. Metformin acts in liver to control blood glucose level. So super additive, otherwise known as potentiation. The effect of the combination is greater than the individual effects of each component. Acetylcholine and phisostamine. Um, acetylcholine acts on muscle produce effect. Phisostamine is not active. Both are degraded by acetylcholine esterase when acetylcholine is alone. The enzyme will break it down quickly. You have phisostamine if the enzyme doesn't know which one to attack. Composition between the two, so it increases the duration of acetylcholine. Evidopa and carbidopa. Evidopa treats Parkinson's disease by converting to dopamine to prevent movement disorder. When taken orally, levodopa is converted to dopamine in the intestine, causing adverse effects like vomiting. Give it the carbidopa, which prevents the breakdown of the intestines, so it can be transported to the brain. Cross the blood brain barrier where it can convert the dopamine to act on the basal ganglia to solve a methoxazole slash trimethoprim. Inhibits two enzymes, inflammation of tetrahydrofolic acid, which is required for bacterial cell wall synthesis. If you want to kill the bacteria, you need sulfur methoxazole to prevent the conversion of PABA to an intermediate product. And then you need trimethoprim to prevent the conversion of the intermediate product to tetrahydrofolic acid. So nalapril and hydrochlorothiazide, nalapril, angiotensin covering enzyme angiotensin covering inhibitor, hydrochlorothiazide, diuretic, acts in two different places to produce the antihypertensive effect. So let's wrap this up. Drug action and enzymology. 
So the ES is referring to your enzyme substrate complex. The enzyme, a type of protein that speeds up a chemical reaction in a living thing. Enzymes are globular proteins, very specific. Substrate reactant, EP, enzyme product complex, irreversible, irreversible inhibition of enzymes caused by covalent bonds. Enzymes cannot be regenerated. The only way the product can be catalyzed is when new enzyme molecules are produced in the body. Reversible inhibition of enzymes. Enzymes can be freed from the complex to give the active enzyme. Ka, association constant of ligand with receptor site. Kd, association constant for the receptor. EC50, drug concentration given a response halfway between the baseline and maximum. IC50, concentration which produces 50% of the maximum possible inhibitory response, which is equal to the quantile response. Quantile response equals IC50. So affinity, the ability of a compound to bind tightly to the target. Intrinsic activity, the drug's ability to produce an effect once bound to the receptor. Potency, the amount of drug needed to produce an effect. The more potent the drug, the steeper the slope on the DRC, on the dose response curve. Efficacy. So efficacy, the potential maximum therapeutic response a drug can have, example, say most ferrosamide eliminates more salt and water than chlorothiazide, so ferrosamide has a higher efficacy. Okay, so efficacy, the potential maximum therapeutic response a drug can produce. Allosteric site, or allosteric brings another, it's a site the drugs bind to that exerts the activity that's not the actual receptor site of the endogenous ligand. So isosteroid, which is a nice word, replacement of modifications of functional groups with other groups having similar properties. So replacement of modifications of functional groups with other groups having similar properties. It tunes, make sure you remember that word, tunes the drug metabolism, receptor fit distribution of the properties. So bioisosteroid, swapping of functional groups present in the chemical compound while maintaining the desired biological activity corrects undesired properties. So let's wrap this up. Um, so this involves starting with comparing compound and using isosteres, which can be slightly, which involves slightly changing the general structure to make more desirable structures. These are analogs. So isosteres of hydrogen, fluorine, isosteres of fluorine, hydroxyl, Amine, so NH2 or CH3, in brackets H, um, isosteres of carbon, carbon, isosteres of hydroxyl, amine, isosteres of sulfur hydrogen, hydroxyl, isosteres of fluorine, 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 and trifluoromethyl. So this is the end of the episode.
Grateful and humbled to be pursuing further studies as a pharmacist in training in the U.S. These episodes will be under the theme, The Journey to Narplex Success. These will cover, in some of the form, key points that stand out to me as I embark on my journey as a pharmacy student and chart a course in Narplex Success. Note the purpose of these episodes. These are not at all for advice or medical suggestions, but to provide support for pair pharmacists and training in educational and intellectually stimulating ways. These are not at all for medical advice or for medical suggestions. Please see a local state and board certified physician, PA or NP and pharmacist for medical advice and suggestions. The new chemist becomes a pharmacist in training, the journey to NAPLEX success. So the NAPLEX, the North American Pharmacist Licensure Examination, is a standard examination created by the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy, NABP, to help individual state boards of pharmacy assess an individual's competency and knowledge so that they may be given a license to practice. Some big abbreviations you want to keep in mind, USP, United States Pharmacopeia, 34, and Natural Formulary, NF, 29. So this would be episode 2A. So there will be a 2B and there will be a 2C. So this is 2A. Episode 2A. So biopharmaceutics and drug delivery systems. So some key ideas we want to keep in mind. Biopharmaceutics is a study of the relation of the physical and chemical properties of a drug to its bioavailability, pharmacokinetics, and pharmacodynamics and toxicological effects. Key terms in review, your drug product. It is the finished dosage form, example tablet capsule solution that contains the active drug ingredient in association with non-drug, usually inactive ingredients, excipients that make up the vehicle or formulation matrix. Drug delivery system is a more complete concept, which includes the drug formulation and the dynamic interaction among the drug, its formulation matrix, its container, and the patient. Bioavailability is a measurement of the rate and extent or amount of systemic absorption of the therapeutically active drug. Pharmacokinetics is a study of the body's effect on the drug, ADME. Pharmacodynamics is a study of the drug's effect on the body. So... How we're going to do this episode is going to be completely lyrical. So we're going to begin the lyrical portion right now. Biopharmaceutics and drug delivery systems. Biopharmaceutics is like a Rubik's Cube with your four ideas making you drool. Bioavailability is a measurement of the rate an extent or amount of systemic absorption. Please take the right portion. The systemic absorption of the therapeutically active drug. Yeah. Biopharmaceutics includes pharmacokinetics. Your A, your D, your M, your E. The effect of the body on the drug with that A absorption, D distribution, M metabolism, and excretion. Biopharmaceutics includes pharmacodynamics with the effects of the drug on the man. We are looking at the relation between drug concentration at the site of the action its response which is the main caption woo then we also consider in biopharmaceutics the toxicologic effects lest I forget the drug product in its formulation matrix a vehicle with the active ingredient and excipients. Lest I forget the drug delivery 
with the dynamic menagerie of interactions among the drug, its formulation matrix, its container, and the patient. Continuing on with the spiel, let's drive the drug transport and absorption wheel. Across, across the cell membrane, the drug molecules enter the bloodstream and are transported to the tissues and organs. Let's look at some key processes in absorption. Pancellular passive, diffusion and partitioning, paracellular transport, diffusion and convection. Let me add some focal inflections with your carrier mediated transport and the P glycoprotein mediated efflux which we'll get to in episode 2b. These general principles are important you see. These general principles are important to know. These general principles are important so assemble compose P passive diffusion in thugs. They traverse the cell membrane easily than your ionic soluble drugs. We cannot forget the LMWs. The low molecular weight is just like the chemical thugs. Across a cell membrane more easily than the high molecular weight drugs. Let's keep it going. Do you hear what I say? We will progress in pharmacy. HU, you know. Passive diffusion and partitioning within the cytoplasm or the fluid that's interstitial. Your drugs under transport. This is not pontificial. It's simple. The simple diffusion with a great fixed law. Simple passive diffusion involves the transfer of drugs from an area of high concentration C1 to an area of low concentration C2 according to fixed law DQ over DT equals ideally DA over H in brackets C1 minus C2 where DQ over DT is the rate of drug diffusion you see D is a diffusion code efficient for the drug A is a surface area of the plane across which transfer occurs remember your chemistry thugs H is the thickness of the region through which diffusion occurs and C1 minus C2 is the difference between the drug concentration in area 1 and area 2 respectively. So with the passive drug transport Welcome to my conceptual court. It involves successive partitioning of a solute between aqueous and lipid phases, as well as diffusion within respective phases. Modifying fixed law, please. Let's applaud. I'm kidding. But we do this to accommodate partitioning of 
drug. DQ over DT equals D times A times K over H in bracket C1 minus C2. Well, well. Hold it. Hold it. The rate of drug diffusion. DQ over DT. Now reflects its dependence on K. The oil to water partition coefficient of the drug as well as on 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 A. And in brackets C1 minus C2. Rum part tum tum. Ionization of a weak electrolyte. You know I always wanted to be an acolyte, a therapist, a catechist, or a trumpeter, you see. But today we're talking about my good friend, not the trumpeter, but Le Chatelier. In the ionization, so ionization is affected by pH of the medium in which the drug is dissolved as well as by the pKa. Remember, non-ionized are like the chemical thugs, more lipid, soluble, the diffusive thug, if you will. They are more lipid soluble than the ionized and it partitions more readily. Hopefully by now you realize. Rumpa tum tum, let's have a drum roll. Hey little beggar boy, oh, that's four. The periodic table, let's talk about the transport process that's not a fable. The active transport the active transport of the drug with it moving across a concentration gradient requiring energy, selective potentially, saturation possibility, and competitive it can be. Yet we must look across the hall and see that facilitated diffusion is on the carrier mediated transport system walls. Facilitated diffusion occurs across a concentration gradient and does not require energy. Obrigada, e você? Como você está? Tudo bem? Tudo bem? Tudo? Tudo? Wow, fala um pequeno português. So let's talk in English, por favor. Se vous play. With that power cellular transport drug transport across tight narrow junctions between cells or trans endothelial channels no I'm not talking about fire stick but let me give you a conceptual trick. Paracellular transport involves both diffusion and convective or bulk flow of water and the accompanying water soluble drugs through the channels. Through the channels that can be a hint Now let's look at the vesicles, newly minted, minted, minted idea 
in this lyrical scheme. Vesicular transport is the process of engulfing particles or dissolved materials by a cell. Engulf. Engulfment. Engulfment. Pino with drinking. Fago with eating. Pinocytosis. Engulfment of small solute or fluid volumes. Phagocytosis is the engulfment of larger particles. Your macromolecules generally by macrophages. Endocytosis and exocytosis are the movement of macromolecules into and out of the cell. Biopharmaceutics and drug delivery systems. So we've reached the end of this lyrical scheme. You see, but we'll pick back up conceptually in episode 2B. Okay, so grateful and humble to be pursuing further studies as a pharmacist in the US. These episodes again will be on the theme The Journey to Naplex Success. These will cover in summative form key points that sounded to me as I embark on my journey as a pharmacy student and chart a course to Naplex Success. Note the purpose of these episodes, not at all for advice or medical suggestions, but to provide support for pair pharmacists and training in educational and intellectually stimulating ways. Not at all for medical advice or medical suggestions. Please see your local state and board certified physician, PA or NP, and pharmacist for medical advice and suggestions. The newcomers becomes a pharmacist in training. The journey to NAPLEX success. The North American Pharmacist Licensure Examination, NAPLEX, is a standard examination created by the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy, NABP, to help individual state boards of pharmacy assess an individual's competency and knowledge so that they may be given a license to practice. So this is an important exam. So big abbreviations we want to keep in mind as we conclude. USP 34, United States Pharmacopoeia 34, and NF Natural Formulary 29. So this is the end of the episode. Thanks for listening. First 100, a first 100, a one, two, one, two. First 100, a first 100, a first 100, k. Let's rhyme while we can. This is a learning trip with the brand, with the brand and the generic. Very fast, let's go. Let's look at the drug class A. First 100 A. First 100 A. First 100 K. First the brand, then the generic. Okay, let's go fast and we'll race to the drug class. Keflex, Cephalexin, the antibiotic class it is in. Glucophage, metformin, hydrogen chloride. Diabetes is a drug class, it is insight. Lipitor, autovastatin, cholesterol is a DC it in. Omnicef, ceftinur, antibiotic drug class, yes sir. Nexium, esomeprazole, anti ulcer class, yeah, this has a benzodiazole. Tenomin, atenol, all. Blood pressure drug class with that functional group, yeah, alcohol. 
Prozac, yeah, Floaxetine, the antidepressant, yeah, DC is seen. Ultram, oh yeah, tramadol, analgesic, that DC is called. Prevacid, Lansoprazole, anti-ulcer, it's a member of the benzimidazole. Bactrim, sulfamethoxazole, trimethoprim. The antibiotic is a DC it's in Prilosec, yeah that omeprazole. Anti ulcer DC, come on, let's fold. First one hundred A, first one hundred A, first one hundred K. Paracoset, oxycodone APAP. It's in the analgesic DC you see. Plavix, clop in grel by sulfate. Heart, di- heart disease DC, can you tell? Xalatin, oh yeah, Latana Pros, it's in the glaucoma DC. Okay, let's toast. First 100A, first 100A, first 100K, Atavan. Yeah, Laura Zepam, anti anxiety DC, yes sir, yes ma'am. Valium, diazepam, anti-anxiety, let's go swimming since I swam in high school. First 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K, Humalog, insulin less pro, it's in the diabetes DC, you know, Deseril, trazodone hydrogen chloride, the antidepressant DC, it's inside. First 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K. Ortho tricyclin, low, norgestimate, or EE. Contraceptive, yo. Primarin, conjugated estrogen, hormone replacement DC, it is in. Asafex, rabeprazole, anti ulcer, wow, you are on a roll. First 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K. Methotrexate, amethopterin, the anti-metabolite DC it's in. Estrates, the estradiol, hormone replacement the DC is called. Cleosin, clindamycin, the antibiotic class it is in. Combivent. Epitropium or albuterol, COPD drug class is called Diovan, Valsartan, the blood pressure DC it is in. Wow, yes we can, yes we can. First 100A, first 100A, first 100K, Nikon, Mestranol or norethindrone, contraceptive DC it is known. Avandia, Ross Eglitazone, Diabetes DC, it is known. Amaryl, Glim Epiride, Diabetes DC, it is inside. Guafenex, PSC, Guafenexin, or PSC. Nasal congestion or expectorant, you see. Cymbalta, Dual Oxetine, Hydrogen Chloride, Antidepressant, it is inside. Diflucan. Fluconazole, antifungal is the TC I'm told. Flomax, Tamsulosin, hydrogen chloride, a large prostate is the DC it's inside. Octo, octonel, risadronate sodium, antiosteoporosis is the DC. Um, Celebrex, Celecoxib, anti inflammatory. So let's have it. First 100A, first 100A, first 100K. Macrodantin, nitrofurantoin, antibiotic is a DC coin. Spiriva, teotropium bromide, asthma is the DC it inside. Glycolax, polyethylene glycol, laxative is a DC drum roll. First 100A, first 100A, first 100K. Clonopin, clonazepam, 
anti-anxiety, yes sir, yes ma'am. Tylenol, acetaminophen, or codeine, analgesic DC is on the scene, sildenafil, Viagra, erectile dysfunction, voila, zetia, ezetimibe, cholesterol is the DC, it's inside, major, methylprednisolone, anti-inflammatory is its DC zone, Norvax, Amlodipine Bacillate, Blood Pressure DC, that is great, Cipro, Ciprofloxacin, Ciprofloxacin, Antibiotic DC, it's in let's draw that back, Cipro, Ciprofloxacin, Antibiotic DC, it is in, Zestril, Lysinopril, Blood Pressure DC, Okay now chill. First 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K. Trinessa, Norgestimate or EE. Contraceptive DC, that is great. Synthroid or Levoxyl, Levox, Thyroxine, Thyroid Replacement, Cybra. My brothers will. What? Let's get back. First 100 A, first 100 A. First 100K, Allegra, Fexofanadine, Hydrogen Chloride, Allergy is DC on the scene. DC for all those listening is how we refer to the drug class it's in. First 100A, first 100A, first 100K. Proventil or Pro-L Ventolin, Albuterol Sulfate, Asthma DC it's in. Chlorcon, potassium chloride, potassium replacement DC, it's inside. First 100A, first 100A, first 100K. Phenergon, promethazine hydrogen chloride, cost suppressant DC, it is inside. Penzik, penicillin, antibiotic class, it is in. Leverquin. Levofloxacin, antibiotic, antibiotic class it is in. Antibiotic, 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 antibiotic. Hydro, diuril, hydrochlorothiazide, diuretic DC it is inside. Folby, folic acid, D supplement DC. Wow, this list is massive. First 100A, first 100A, first 100K. Protonix, Pantoprazole, anti ulcer DC is what I'm told. Zocor, Simvastatin, cholesterol DC is what it's in. Flexoril, Cyclobenzaprine, Muscle Relaxer DC, this is a farm dream. Zyrtec, Cetirizine, Allergy DC is a class on the scene. Fosamax, Alendronate Sodium, Osteoporosis DC, this is Intellectual Matrimonium. First 100A, first 100A, first 100K. Lantus, Insulin Glargine, Diabetes, Diabetes DC is on the scene. Lexapro, Escitalopram, Antidepressant DC, yes sir, yes ma'am. Xanax, Alprazolam, Anti-Anxiety. Let's camcord this whoa first one hundred A first one hundred K singular Monte Luca sodium asthma is a DC so let's go first one hundred A first one hundred K first one hundred A Neurotin Gabapentin anti neurotic DC it's in Lasix Furosemide Diuretic DC it's inside Amoxil, Amoxil, Amoxilin, Antibiotic DC, it's in Antibiotic, 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 Antibiotic. First 100A, first 100A, first 100K, Flonate, Fluticazone, Propionate, Allergy DC, that is great, Antidepressant, 
Whoa, well, I could use a break. First 100, hey! First 100, hey! First 100K! Bitcoin then. Hydrocodone. R-I-P-A-P. NLG stick. D-C-I-C. Let's go back again. Well, Butrin or Zimban. Bupropion. Hydrogen chloride. Antidepressant. I could use a trip inside to the ice cream store. First 100, hey! First 100, hey! First 100K! Vicodin. Hydrocodone. OAPAP. NLG6. DCIC. Zithromax. Azithromycin. Antibiotic. DC. It's in. Motrin. Ibuprofen. Anti inflammatory DC. It's in. First 100, hey! First 100, hey! First 100K! Effexor. Effect, then la fascine hydrogen chloride antidepressant dc it's inside delta zone prednisone anti-inflammatory dc is in the zone zoloft cetraline hydrogen chloride antidepressant dc it's inside adva air fluticasone propionate osamethorol Asthma DC, that's great. Let's call it a draw. First 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K. Nasonex, Marmetazone 408. Allergies, that is DC, that's great. Trick core, then no fibrate. Cholesterol DC, to that class, don't be late. Celex, Citalopram, antidepressant DC, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Bitterin. Ezetimibe, Osimvastatin, cholesterol DC is what it's in. Yasmin, Dospiranone, OEE, it's a contraceptive DC. You see DC in this rap, let me remind you, stands for that drug class, so don't fall behind the stand. First 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K. Fibromycin. Doxy sick clean. Antibiotic DC, that's fine. Fibromycin. Doxy sick clean. Antibiotic DC, that's fine. Paxil. Paroxetine. Antidepressant DC on the scene. Crestor. Rosuvastatin. Cholesterol DC, it is in. Diazide. Oh, Maxide. HCTZ triamterene that diuretic DC is on the scene detrol toteraldine tatri that overactive bladder DC so don't be late to the test whoa first 100A first 100A first 100K law lavastatin cholesterol DC is what it's in Tusionex, chlorophen, erapmine, or hydrocodone. That cough suppressant DC is that zone it's in. First 100A, first 100A. Elevelle, antidepressant drug class is on the scene. Aldactone, spironolactone, diuretic DC is the zone. Minocin, minocycline. Antibiotic DC so pristine. First 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K. Evista, Raloc, Ephine, Osteoporosis DC, it's in. Lotril, Amlodipine, or Benzapril. Blood pressure DC, so just chill. Minocin, Minocycline. Antibiotic DC so pristine. First 100 A, first 100 K, first 100 A, 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 Mobic, Mobic. Meloxicam, anti-inflammatory DC, yes mom. Ambium, Zolpedimum, Tartrate, a DC, 
So say, say it again now. Amelie and Zal said them, top trait, that sensitive disease. So say, first 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K. Siloprim, allopyranol, that anti-gout DC. Come on, let's go on that crawl. First 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K. Adderall, then that's true. Amphetamine, an amphetamine. CNS stimulant is on the scene. Adderall, that's true. Amphetamine, on amphetamine. CNS stimulant is on the scene. Cialis, pedophilus, erectile dysfunction DC. Wow, chill. First 100 A, first 100 A, first 100 K. Okay, so this will be an addendum, an addendum to the episode in which we discuss some common abbreviations uh, outlined in uh, pharmacy. Some of these are in Latin, many of these are in Latin. So A, A dot, Anna, of each, A, D, up to, to make, so just draw it back, A, A dot, Anna, which means of each, A, D, add, which means up to or to make DISP dot dispensator dispense means dispense DIV dot divator divator divide D dot T dot D denter talus doses which means give us such doses FT fiat which means to make capital M dot mise which means to mix N, capital N, O, dot, numero, which means number, non, space, rep, R-E-P, dot, or N-R, which both are capitalized, means non repetitor, and that means do not repeat. Q-S, quantum sufficient, a sufficient quantity. Q-S-A-D, Q dot S dot A-D. Quantum sufficient add a sufficient quantity to make SIG dot signa, which means to write in brackets directions on label. So some common abbreviations you have BSA body surface area, um, CM raised to the three cubic centimeter or milliliter. F or FL fluidus fluid. Um, let's go through some more. G is gram, G A L is gallon, G T T gutter, which means drop I dot U dot or I U international units. Uh, L B libra, which means pound, K G kilogram, L liter, M to the second or capital M to the second square meter, M C G microgram, M E Q milli equivalent, M G milligram. Mg over kg milligrams as drug per kilogram of body weight. Mg over m squared milligrams as drug per square meter of body surface area. M capital I U or milli I U thousandth of an international unit. Capital M capital I capital U million international units. ML milliliter ML per H. Uh, milliliters of drug administered per hour as through intravenous administration. M capital O S M or M capital O S M O L. So M capital O lowercase s lowercase m or M capital O lowercase s lowercase m O L milli osmoles. So O Z dot ounce P T pint Q T quart S S or S S with a line over both S's means one half semisem. TBSP dot tablespoonful, TSP dot teaspoonful, admin, administer, AM, ante, meridium, morning, AQ dot aqua, water, and die twice a day. C or C with a line over it, come, which means with, D in bracket, or die, which means day, DIL dot dilutus, dilute, et, and, 
H dot or H R dot aura, which means hour, H S aura, somni at bedtime, I C intercebos between meals, M I N dot minutum minute. M and N morning and night N and V both N and V are capitalized nausea and vomiting N O C T dot nocte night N P O non per os nothing by mouth P C post sibos after meals P M post meridium afternoon or evening P O per os by mouth or orally P R N pro re nata as needed Q quake every Q capital A M every morning Q four H or Q eight H etc every number in brackets hours Q I D quarter in die four times a day Q I D quarter in die four times a day rep dot repetitor repeat S C N A without S I D semel in die once a day S O S C opposite if there is need as needed. S O S C opposite if there is need or as needed. Stat stamnin immediately. T I D tur and die three times a day. Ut dict. Ut dictum as directed. W K dot week. So ap ap acetaminophen. So A P A P acetaminophen. A S A aspirin. A Z T zido vudine. E E S erythromycin. Ethyl succinate. H C hydrocortisone, H C T Z hydrochlorothiazide, M T Z M T X excuse me M T X methotrexate, N S A I D nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So M T X methotrexate, N S A I D nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drug, N T G nitroglycerin. So clinical abbreviations you have AFib atrial fibrillation. ADR adverse drug reaction. You also have BM bowel movement. And these are all these are capitalized. BP blood pressure. BS blood sugar. CAD coronary artery disease. CHD coronary heart disease. CHF congestive heart failure. COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Okay, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. GERD, gastrointestinal reflux disease. CRF, chronic renal failure. CV, cardiovascular. ENT, air, nose, and throat. GI, gastrointestinal. GFR, glomerular, glomerular filtration rate. GU, genitourinary. HA, headache. HPP, heart rate. HR, high blood pressure. HRT, hormone replacement therapy. HT or HTN hypertension, HT or HTN hypertension, IOP intraocular pressure, MI myocardial ischemia slash infarction. So MI myocardial ischemia slash infarction, OA osteoarthritis, PT patient, QL quality of life. So P T P is capitalized, T is lowercase, patient, QL quality of life, RA rheumatoid arthritis, SOB. Shortness of breath, and that means dextrose five percent in lactated ringers. D five NS dextrose five percent in normal saline. In brackets zero point nine percent sodium chloride. D five W dextrose five percent in water. D ten W dextrose ten percent in water. E L I X dot elixir I N G I N J dot so I N J dot injection. NS normal saline half NS half strength normal saline oint or UNGT unct or mean that means so unct UNGT means unguentum and that means ointment so UNGT dot stands for unguentum which means ointment PULV dot pelvis L dot solutio solution SUPP dot suppositorium suppository SUS P dot suspension, S U S P dot suspension, S Y R dot serupus syrup, C A B dot tableta tablet. So roots slash location of administration. 
a dot d dot rs dextro right air a dot s dot rs sinistro left air a dot u dot rs utro each air or both capital c i v i continuous in brackets 24 hours intravenous infusion ID intradermal, INJ injection, IM intramuscular, IT intrathecal, IV intravenous, IVB intravenous bolus, IV drip intravenous infusion, IVP intravenous push, IVPB intravenous piggyback, NGT nas- nasogastric tube, NGT nasogastric tube, O dot D dot oculodextro. Right eye, O dot S dot oculo sinistro, left eye, O dot U dot oculo utro, each eye, so both P dot O dot or P O per os by mouth, REC dot or pro recto, rectal or rectum, so REC dot or pro recto, which means rectal or rectum, SL, both S and L are capitalized, sublingual, S U B Q. Or SC subcutaneously, TOP dot of the addendum. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. Bienvenidos al podcast del Nuevo Químico. Carlos Irza, esto podcast tu New Chemist. Welcome by the podcast von the New Chemist. Bienvenue sur le podcast du Nouveau Chimiste. Bem-vindo ao podcast do Novo Químico. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. Work hard. Be value-driven. You can do it. You can grow and learn it. You can be the difference you and your community needs. Don't give up. We are here rooting and cheering for you. Don't give up. Travaillez dur. Soyez axés sur la valeur. Tu peux le faire. Vous pouvez grandir et l'apprendre. Vous pouvez être la différence dont vous et votre communauté avez besoin. N'abandonnez pas. Nous sommes ici pour vous encourager et vous encourager. N'abandonnez pas. Trabalhar duro. Seja orientado por valores. Você consegue. Você pode crescer e aprender. Você pode ser a diferença que você e sua comunidade precisam. Não desista. Estamos aqui torcendo e torcendo por você. Não desista. Duepse esclirá. Na odigite estinaxia. Boris na tocanis. Μπορείτε να μεγαλώσετε και να το μάθετε. Μπορείτε να είστε η διαφορά που χρειάζεστε εσείς και η κοινότητά σας. Μην τα παρατάς. Είμαστε εδώ για να σας ζητοκραυγάσουμε. Μην τα παρατάς. Τραβάχα δούρο. Σέα impulsado por el valor. Puedes hacerlo. Puedes crecer y aprenderlo. Usted puede ser la diferencia que usted y su comunidad necesitan. No te rindas, estamos aquí animándote y animándote. No te rindas. Ve 
Werk hard. Wees waardegedreven. Je kunt het. Je kunt groeien en leren. U kunt het verschil zijn dat u en uw gemeenschap nodig hebben. Geef niet op. We zijn hier om voor je te roten en te juichen. Geef niet op. Work hard. Be value driven. You can do it. You can grow and learn it. You can be the difference you and your community needs. Don't give up. We are here rooting and cheering for you. Don't give up. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is the new chemist where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I.